welcome back we are starting a series of lectures on this topic photoelectrochemical cells pc in short this is one of the most interesting topic in all of electrochemistry because it's extremely rich in science but the downside is that despite decades of exploration this field has not given rise to practical large scale commercial technology but still it holds promise um it is good to understand the intricacies involved in the phenomena wherein light or solar energy is utilized for undertaking electrochemical transformation so far in all our earlier lectures we have looked at a particular kind of electrochemical system wherein an ionic conductor is interfaced with an electronic conductor this ionic conductor is the electrolyte and the electronic conductor is typically a metal that is the electrode however there are other possibilities for interfaces which are of interest to electrochemist for example you can have a interface between ionic conductor and a semiconductor that is going to be uh, the central focus of this series of lectures here the electrolyte is the ionic conductor but the electrode instead of it being a metal the electrode here is a semiconductor so we would see why we are going to be using a semiconductor in the next few slides there are other interfaces that are possible you can have an interface between two ionic conductors uh, that is also interesting but we are not going to be uh, dealing with these interfaces or you can have an interface between ionic conductor and an insulator the insulator can just be glass this also has certain interesting electrochemical features uh, again we are not going to be discussing this interface in this series of lectures so our focus is going to be on this kind of electrochemical interface the semiconductor electrolyte interface so why do we care about the semiconductor uh, electrolyte interface a lot many things are being displayed in this um, uh, slide do not worry if you do not understand all parts of this uh, the purpose of the series of lectures is to decode what is displayed here but this is a, a first introduction so what do we see here we have a semiconductor you have an electrolyte and the other electrode is a metal uh, which is a cathode in this uh, in this case the central utility of a semiconductor is that it is capable of absorbing photons the because of the feature of the band structure of the semiconductor that it has a band gap makes it possible to absorb a photon and a photon when it is absorbed by a semiconductor it creates an whole electron pair there is a technical name for this it's called an exciton an exciton is an electron hole pair and because of certain features of the semiconductor electrolyte interface specifically the band bending phenomena that exists when a semiconductor electrolyte is interfaced this band bending phenomena makes it possible to split the exciton that is the hole moves in one direction and the electron moves in another direction as you may have heard in your previous lectures from high school or previous courses the hole would always move up 
the band structure and the electrons move down the band structure. So as you can see, the hole moves up the band structure and towards the electrolyte, wherein it is possible to utilize the hole to do some electrochemistry. The electrons move in the opposite direction, go across the wire uh, via the load also, and the electrons are also involved in performing certain electrochemical reaction. Specifically, the hole reacts with a reduced species that is present in the electrolyte. When these two combine, you have an oxidized species that is also in the electrolyte. In turn, the this oxidized species gets transported in the electrolyte, reacts with the electron, which has been transported from the semiconductor across the wire and the low. When oxidized species combines with an electron, it gives rise to the reduced species, which is shuttles, which shuttles to this semiconductor electrode interface to complete the cycle. So what is that you have accomplished here? Supposing this redox cycle is an, involves an energy input. Here, what we have done is that using this photon as an energy input, the photon can be from a uh, solar spectrum. Using this photon input, you have driven uh, an uh, endothermic uh, reaction. Or, or even if you don't, because this is a cyclical reaction, even if you don't have a net reaction, what you have managed to do is that drive a load. Okay, So for driving a load, you have to have done an electrical work. So this electrical work has essentially been accomplished via a solar photon mediated by the semiconductor electrolyte interface. So, so in, in a way, you have seen this system when it is partitioned two ways. This photoelectrochemical system can be split into a solar cell wherein solar energy is converted to electrical work and the second part could have been an electrolyzer wherein um, um, an external electrical input um, drives water electrolysis which is what you would see in the next slide for example so instead of having two devices a solar cell under water electrolysis these two devices are integrated at a molecular level into photoelectrochemical system. In a photoelectrochemical system, what happens is that when, when the photoelectrochemical system is utilized to drive photoelectrolysis, what happens is that water is oxidized at the anode via the hole to generate oxygen and a proton. And the proton gets transported across the electrolyte and combines with the electron to generate hydrogen. So this process of splitting water into oxygen and hydrogen is an endothermic process. This endothermic process is accomplished by uh, a photon that is obtained from, let's say, solar energy. So this has been... Uh, perhaps the central focus of photoelectrochemical system. That is the promise of solar energy to drive water electrolysis to generate oxygen and hydrogen. So this is, uh, right now there is a lot of emphasis on green hydrogen. So this is probably one of the greenest form of hydrogen. That is, if you can obtain uh, hydrogen from a resource uh, which is essentially abundant. Okay, so essentially infinite. This is water, and another essentially infinite 
energy source which is solar energy if we can accomplish this this is a great source of energy as well as chemicals both hydrogen and oxygen are valuable chemicals in chemical industry um, and hydrogen if supplied to a uh, fuel cell can e e essentially give you hydro uh, uh, electrical power so this promise that is of obtaining hydrogen and oxygen via solar energy mediated by a semiconductor electrochemical um, interface has been the promise of this field. Um, to accomplish this efficiently, many things have to be understood and optimized. Uh, first, there are constraints on optical absorption in the semiconductor. Uh, there is a certain minimum energy that has to be supplied for water electrolysis that depends upon the band gap of a semiconductor, which in turn will absorb uh, um, certain um, photons of a minimal energy. So this constraints of optical absorption has to be understood. We'll elaborate all these issues in the series of lectures. I'm just giving you a broad overview of what we are going to be looking at in the next few lectures. Then there is this very important aspect of band bending at the semiconductor electrolyte interface. The reasons um, for band bending and what it accomplishes at a microscopic level. That is, in the aspect of exciton separation at the semiconductor electrolyte interface, that is essentially because of band bending. We'll also elaborate this. Then once a hole goes to the electrolyte electrode interface, there is an electrochemical reaction that is accomplished by the hole. Or um, you can also have photocathodes wherein electrons do the electrochemistry. Here you have a photoanode wherein the hole does the surface electrochemistry. Then overall, there are aspects of photoelectrochemical efficiency metrics. So if you want this to be competing with a solar cell and an electrolyzer, this is in a way, it's an integrated unit, right? Instead of, instead of having a solar cell absorbing a photon and giving rise to electrical power, and this electrical power being supply to electrolysis unit, you have an integrated photoelectrochemical system. So if you want to compete it you with a solar cell integrated with an electrolyzer, you have to compete in uh, many ways, right? First, the cost must be competitive. The efficiency must be competitive. The cost might be determined by materials that go into photoelectrochemical system contrasted with the materials that go into a solar cell and an electrolyzer and the efficiency should also be comparable. For example, um, the efficiency of an inexpensive uh, polycrystalline or amorphous solar cell is about 10%. Uh, the typical electrolyzer efficiency is about 60%. Now it has gone to about 70%. So if you integrate this into one unit in a photoelectrochemical system, your efficiency should be about 6%, right? Because uh, the efficiency of a solar cell is 10%, efficiency of an electrolysis unit is six, 60%. So when integrated, your PEC efficiency should be of the order of 6%. So we will elaborate all these issues in the series of lectures. Um, it has fascinating science. And the hope has been that it would give rise to a practical technology. In the next lecture, we will look at certain properties of semiconductors that are relevant to photoelectrochemical systems. That we will look at in the next lecture. Thank you.